Let's go uh, back to Exodus 20. Give me verse uh, 13. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. He said what? Thou shalt not kill. Can the black community change if we stop killing black people? Can the Hispanic community change if we stop killing Hispanic people? Can the Native American man change and the whole nation of Israel change if we stop killing Native Americans? If, if everybody went back and started loving each other and if brothers, came, if brothers had the sense to love each other and to preserve the life of other Israelites, we would change literally overnight. That's right. Things would change for the worst, I mean for the best, overnight. Read again. Wake them up. Thou shalt not kill. And that word kill is ratazat, which really means murder. Right? Thou shalt not murder. Right? He said, Thou shalt not murder. Right? Give me, um, give me, uh, uh, what do I want? Romans 13. Give me Romans 13 and 8. Right? Read on. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Ooh, that's a big one. Adultery is big in the black community, adultery is big in the Latino community. Adultery is big in the Israelite community. Right. We were we were hearing horror stories. Dang. So we gotta come back and keep the laws of God. You got brothers wearing fringes that's still in adultery. Right. You got brothers that's wearing fringes that's still in all types of lust and whoremonger. Right? He said, What? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not the black church would be a lot better if there was so much adultery that was taken out. Right. The pastor the bishops, the reverend, sleeping with brothers' wives. Brothers' wives sleeping with other brothers' wives. Right? right? Go ahead and just watch YouTube videos. You got a lot of pastors are getting attacked by the members of the congregation, but we're not hearing the other side of the story. Right. We're not hearing why he attacked the pastor in the middle of church. Probably has something to do with how he's he praying with his brother's wife, and it's just them two. Right. Whole lot of alone time with the pastor. Found something out. Right? You can see a whole lot of stuff on YouTube, man. So hold that. Right? Give me that in uh, Romans 13. Verse 8. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 8. Uh-huh. Owe no man anything. Don't stop right there. Paul said, owe no man anything. This is another key on how we can make ourselves better. Right? I owe that brother money, and it's been two years since I paid him $25 back. Now he mad. Y'all see, um, what's that movie? Men's Society? Remember Samuel Jackson? Remember when the dude got out of prison? And Samuel said, ain't it about time you owe me my money? And he killed him right there at the spade table. Right? Cause, but how he gonna give him money back? He just got out the joint. You ain't give him enough time. The Bible said what? Owe no man anything. We gotta start paying our debts. Hey, the law says you should not let the sun set without paying your debt to that, to that brother. You owe him money for wages? Before the sun set, pay him his money back. It's the right thing to do. Huh. The Bible said what? Owe no man anything. That's one of the keys right there. Don't owe nobody any money. If you can pay it back, pay it back. If you can't pay it back, don't even borrow it. Right? Come on. But to love one another. But to do what? But to love one another. So if we can just love each other, go to Chicago and preach love for each other. Go to Baltimore and preach love for each other. Go to, the, go to uh, Atlanta. Right, go to New Orleans and preach love for one another. Come on. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now we fulfill the law. Because I'm going to pay your money back when that sun go down. When I can do it, right? I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you when you're going off. When you're going off. I got love for you. I don't want you in sin, brother. I, I, I don't want you owing any money. I don't want you owing God. Hey, look, bro, put the pork down. This is how you love each other, by coming up here and teaching our people the laws of the Most High God. Come on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. We just read it, right? Exodus 20, right? Read it again. The adultery part? 14? Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So is Paul teaching the Torah? No. Right here? No. Read it again. Verse 9. Uh -huh. For this... Thou shalt not commit adultery. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. We just read it. Verse 13, right? Thou shalt not murder. Come on. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not what? Thou, Thou shalt, shalt not steal. steal. Thou shalt not steal. How many thieves we got running around, breaking in people's doors, breaking in people's houses, and then wondering why they're getting packed out on the street? 
You cannot steal and expect love from your that's not love for your brother if you steal. Come on. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Ooh, what about that part? Right? You run in your mouth, you're gossiping, you're bearing false witness. That's not true. Well, I heard, I heard this, I heard that. We gotta stop that, even in our own nation. We gotta stop having everybody's name in our mouth. That's right. When it's not conducive, when it's not helping our people, right? Thou should not bear false witness. Don't stop lying on brothers. That's a sin that could be punishable by death depending on the false witness. Come on. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not what? Thou, Thou shalt not, not covet. Hey, a lot of things come from coveting. Adultery comes from coveting. Right. right? What did Paul say? I had not known adultery had I learned thou shalt not what? Covet. covet. Thou shalt not. Listen, if I don't covet, I'm not in Chicago still in Jordans. I'm not stealing cars, right? Grand theft, out of all these different things come from coveting. Adultery comes from coveting first. You covet that man's wife first, and then you commit adultery, right? right? You commit you, you commit murder because you want them shoes or you want them rims. Again, let's go back to the movie, Minister Society, right. where he went and went into the brother's car <laughs> when he had the, uh, the 5.0 with the Daytonas on there, right. right? And he stole the car. We still brothers' wives every Saturday on Glenwood Avenue. Right. Yes. Brothers out here lusting over brothers' wives on Friday nights, mm -hmm. right. right? She got a man, but she's so easy, right? This is why a lot of our brothers are in bad relationships. That's sin upon right? That's sin upon sin. Coveting and then adultery. That's, adultery. that's two sins, right? And listen, if you cut coveting out, there is no adultery. If you cut coveting out, there is no adultery. There is no murder. There is no uh, 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 stealing, right? right? And listen, a lot of these relationships are made right here in the club, right? You met her, she had a man. Right. And then in five years, now you've been replaced and you wondering why. Well, look how you met her, right? Look how, look how you met him. You came outside with your whole body showing and you want him to not be lustful. Well, you got him by showing your body and you want him to just change. Right. Men are built and you, you're going to keep them how you found them. That's right. That's some, that's some relationship advice here on in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, from the servants of the Lord, right? If you want a good man, you have to actually put in some work and strategically place uh, uh, um, uh, an amount of value on your spouse. And it can't just be off the lust of the flesh or the wanting of the eyes. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. What's going on, brother? Y'all believe in the Bible? Yes. All praise to the Most High. Can I show you something real quick? Sure. All right, read it from the top. Uh, oh. Follow me, read it. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 9. Uh -huh. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. So what we out here teaching our people is that when you look on this sign right here, our people go back to the 12 tribes of Israel. Y'all believe in this information? Y'all familiar with this information about the Jews of the Bible? Right? So Paul is saying right here how to fix the black community. We just went before y'all came, right? Go to Exodus 20. I'm going to show you how to... How do y'all think we can fix black people's problems? We got a lot of them, right? Yes. Whole lot of problems, right? Yes. I'm, I'm gonna read six verses for you, and you tell me if we can change our 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 situation overnight. Read uh, verse twelve. Yep. Exodus chapter twenty, verse twelve. Uh huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. So the first the first thing we need to do as as so called. Go ahead. Read it again. Honor thy mother, thy father, and thy mother. So the first thing we need to do. Hold on. Read it again. Honor thy father and thy mother. So if we honor, if little kids, right, and even adults, right, if we honor our mothers and our fathers, we'll be that much better. That's that's pretty plain, right? That's pretty clear. Read on. That their days may be long upon the land. So we're gonna live a long time. You got a lot of 19 year olds and under that died for murder, gun violence, drug overdose, right? Kidnappings, a lot of our women are kidnapped and never heard from again. The, the Bible said, honor your father and mother. Read on. Give us a man. Let us go by, let us go by. Hey, they were sitting here to drive the word out. So give us a minute, be patient with us, all right? This happens all the time. When that light turns green, they gonna peel out what? See that? They gotta turn green. Yeah. 
turn that volume up. They don't want y'all getting this. So the first thing we established was honor your mother and father. Y'all all agree with that, right? We don't. Which, which the Lord, thy God, giveth thee. Uh huh. Verse thirteen: Thou shalt not kill. So we stop murdering each other. That helps, right? We not we, that helps the black community, right? Because we lead the nation in black on black violence, right? I mean, it is black on. That's what it is, right? We lead the nation in black people dying, black on black crime, right? So thou shalt not murder. That's two, right? Read. Verse fourteen: uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What about adultery? What about when a brother go and creep with another brother's wife? Hey, look, I was listening to something. Y'all good? I was watching something the other day, right? All right, all right, we're not here for you, right? We're here for him. So look, listen, look. <laughs> listen. Hey, they, they, they gonna try y'all, they gonna try to distract y'all, so don't let them distract y'all. I was watching something on, on YouTube or TikTok where there's a new thing where women are going to work and they're having an Uber driver pick them up, but the Uber driver is the side dude. Mm. And they getting in the back of the, it's, it's new, it's, it's crafty, right? She said, my Uber driver's here, I have to work overnight, and she getting in the back seat of her side dude's car. Right? The Bible just said, now what happens when a man, it's your wife, right? Okay, what happens when a man, right? You find out something going on. You, you get upset, right? You wanna, you can see blood. We all would, right? So the Bible said, thou should not commit adultery. Now, if a man finds out another man been laying with his wife, there's violence that happens after that, right? And then there's, after violence, there's jail time or death. Right? So that even helps. If we stop committing adultery, so you got honor and father and mother, right? That helps. Right? What about um we said no murder and then no adultery? Right? Come on. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. What about stealing? If we stop stealing from each other, that helps too, right? Uh -huh. Come on. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now what about bearing false witness? Lying on somebody. And it never even happened that way, right? That happens all through the black community. What about gossip? That also hurts our people, right? God said, don't do these things. And what do we do as Israelites, as so-called black people? We do these things, and we wonder why we're at the bottom of society, right? There's a spiritual reason behind all that. Let me get this last one for him. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. So watch this. What is, do you know what it means to covet? Covet is... I see something that he has and I want it, so I take it. I don't work for it, right? You steal it, right? Or you you uh, you rob somebody for it, or you may even lie. You want someone's wife, you covet that man's wife, and then you start selling, bearing false witness against that brother so she can leave him. All this crafty counsel for, for coveting, right? So it says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Come on. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. And his wife. That leads to adultery, right? Because you want her, so then you start in the DMs, you start talking to her on the, on the low, right? Come on. No, his man servant. Come on. No, his maid servant. So the things that he has, come on. No, his ox, no, his ass, or okay. anything that is thy neighbor. See that? So these different things that we talked about can literally overnight change the black community. We are out here teaching how to fix that. Because guess what? You go on Riley Boulevard, before you came up, we were talking about MLK Boulevard. Everything that happens over there is the curses that lead us against each other, right? So let me ask you a question, right? Y'all believe in the Bible, and we teach the Bible. If you come up, brother, the sister, right? Look at this right here on the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, left-hand side. This is what the America and the, and the people call you, right? This is what God calls the 12 tribes of Israel, right? To take your time and see if you can find out where your father's from on this sign and that's who you are right and as we read and as y'all looking at that go back to that romans 18 i mean romans 8. oh no man anything oh 13 and 8. 13 and 8. Come, 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 come. Not it yet? it's the book of romans chapter 13 verse 8. Uh -huh. it says oh no man anything come on but to love one another. So we teach our people how to actually love each other, right? That's your wife, that's your wife. That's my wife, that's my wife. You know what I'm saying? Not not a whole bunch of gossip, not a whole bunch of slander, not a whole bunch of uh, uh, destruction, right? Turn your radio on. What's the music nowadays? Is, it, is, is the music today about building black people or destroying black people? Destruct, destruction, right? Come on. It says, owe no man anything uh -huh. but to love one another. But to love one another, come on. For he that loveth another 
hath fulfilled the law. Come on. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, uh -huh. thou shalt not bear false witness. So what we see right here is Paul is teaching the Torah, the law that people think. What, how do y'all feel about the law? And look, we, we out here just to have a conversation. Like we not going to jump down your throat in that law. Oh, no, the law, I say the law, the law of the Bible, like God, the Mosaic law, how about that? Like, no eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, you find that in the law, right? Right. It's hard, right? Now, if you don't have a body, like a, a, a gathering, it is hard, right? But if you have brothers around and sisters around that can, that can, that's on the same path to salvation right then it's going to be a lot easier right so what we teaching is that the law must be kept you have to have the faith in christ and you got to endure until the end that's how you get eternal salvation right because no one's saved yet you have to put in works have faith and endure to the end to get that salvation that's right and paul is teaching you right here the law of moses right so as we go into that i just want y'all to just think about how the law of moses can make you better and make you better right and it's not just Faith, 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 faith without works is dead. James said that, right? So what we at? Uh, verse nine. Real quick, did y'all find that stuff on here? What, um, specific one is like what? So yeah, you got your father's a Native American. Your My father. What? What about your father? Oh, yeah. He's just black, right? What about you, brother? Your father's Native American. Oh, praise. So, so am I, right? Brothers here. One more brother here. Native Americans, right? The tribe of Gad. So you see that G-A-D? North American Indian, right? You would probably more than likely be from the tribe of Judas, sis, right? Christ came from that tribe of Judah, right? One of the, that's actually the top tribe. So what we teach our people is that we're, nationalist, nationalistically speaking, we're not a color in the crown box. I don't know if y'all call yourself black, right? But if you look at your pants, brother, it's black, right? Right? You get what I'm saying, right? So, and no one's African and American. He's, you know what I'm saying? These are different names. No one's a Negro, right? We are actually the 12 tribes of Israel. And we are God's elect. We are God's chosen people. And it's time for us to come back and keep the laws of God, have the faith in Christ, and endure until the end for us to actually get salvation. Right? Because no one's saved yet. Christ said, He that endured to the end shall be saved. It's not, oh, I'm saved and I can just do what I want to do. Right? You got to go back and understand what salvation actually is. You see what I'm saying? All right, y'all got any questions? All praises, all praises, that's a good question, right? He said, how do we change the black community? We went back to that Exodus, right? Exodus 20 gives you the 10 commandments. That's a start, right? Give me the book of Matthew 19 and 16, right? And give me, uh, let's go back to Matthew 22, Oh, here's a good one, right? Give me that in verse 16. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Here's a law right here that is heavy upon our people. Watch this. Thou shalt not go up and down as talebearers. You know what a talebearer is? You gossip. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got a something. I got the tea, right? I got I got the information right here that, you know what I'm saying? I heard this. I heard, I heard, I heard. He said, thou shalt not be a talebearer, right? Don't. Keep that person's name out your mouth if you're not there. And if it's not going to help our people. That can help overnight. How many family arguments do we have just from somebody putting their name in your mouth and it's incorrect? You know what I'm saying? Lying on you, right? All these things. He said, read again. Thou shalt not go up and down as talebearers among thy people. Uh -huh. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbors. I am the Lord. See that? So when we come out here and what it means to not stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I can't allow someone to sin. I can't allow someone to sin. And I got to say something, right? So watch this. If somebody was coming down the street and they having a pork sandwich, I would say, hey, brother, sister, pork is bad according to Leviticus 11 chapter, right? Hey, you can't be a homosexual according to Leviticus 18. You can't do these things, right? Now, if they take it, great. If they reject it, we did our job. That's how we change the black community, by not having sin upon them, by not allowing them to stay in sin. So now the question is what? What is sin? Get the, get the definition of sin, right? Bring it up. 
Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. These are laws that God gave the Israelites. And God said, listen, if you keep these commandments, the black community will be the top nation as God designed the black community to be. Right? God designed the Israelites, the Israelite nation, the so-called black, Latino, and Native American, to be the top nation. If you are obedient to God, you will be the top nation on the earth. However, if you disobey God, you will be at the bottom. You see what I'm saying? So, did, based off what you see black people living as, did we obey God or did we disobey God? We definitely disobey, right? We all come from the, a, a struggle at some point, right? And we've seen our people in the struggle. So he said, one of the laws is, read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So if we start loving our brother, so-called black people, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, right? Then we become that much more power, right? Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And I have to correct my brother. I have to correct my sister when I can, right? Come on. And not suffer sin upon him. And I can't allow that person to sin. That's how we change the black community. And it's one person at a time. One person at a time. It's not going to be overnight. But one person at a time. And when you start understanding the, the words of this Bible and the prophecies that's coming to pass before, before our very eyes, right? We see what's going on in Russia. We see what's going on in Israel right now, right? These are prophecies being fulfilled, right? And we're teaching our people, you better hop on this ship before... I said ship, right? Hop on this ship. I didn't want the camera to think that I said a curse word, right? <laughs> hop on this plane. Hop on this, this vehicle before you get shut out, right? So where we at? Yeah, here's, here's a definition of sin. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. It says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So to, to answer your question, what's your name, brother? Eric. Eric? Eric. My, na my name is Ra'am, right? So he said, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Talking about the law of Moses. So if I'm out here in sin, I'm eating pork. I'm, 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 I'm sparking up. I'm, I'm over drinking. I'm an adulterer. I'm a whoremonger. I'm coveting. All these things, right, constitute a sin. Come on. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. So that's what sin is. So if we stop sinning, then we actually answer your question, we become on top. We become the, the top nation, right? Where you at? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm going to show y'all something. How do y'all feel about uh, so-called Negroes, so-called black people? Are we, are we, do y'all feel like a superior, a superior over the other nations? You don't? What about you, sis? Let me ask you a question, right? And I, I, I get that's the politically correct answer, right? But deep down, yeah. you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, all praises, yeah, all praises, right? right? Yeah, look, look, I ain't got to, look, who, who sing better than us? <laughs> right? Who cook better than us? Listen, who can go through high school without lights on and still pass the exams? Who can send a man to the moon? Who can build the pyramids in Egypt? The list goes on and on and on. Now, the, now the Most High God also said that. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So Moses is talking to the Israelites. Your forefathers, your forefathers, your foremothers, right? He said, thou art a holy people unto God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. So God said that we're special. Come on. Unto himself. Now he possesses us to himself. Come on. Above. Where? Above. Where are we? Above. So God said you want to be above who? All people, all other people that are upon the face of the earth. So all the Chinese, the Japanese, the so-called white, the Arab, he said, you want to be above all people. You don't. The Lord did not set his love upon you, uh -huh. nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people. It wasn't about how we look, how we feel, how we talk, how we walk, and ain't about that, be. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, because He loved us, He gave His sword to Abraham, our forefather, to Isaac, our forefather, and ultimately to Jacob, our forefather, that we were going to be His chosen vessels. Come on. And because He would keep the oath which He had sworn unto your fathers, uh -huh. 
had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you. Now watch this. We left Israel. We left Egypt with a mighty hand. Pharaoh said, Moses said, let my people go. We left, right, with a mighty hand. Guess what? We're going to leave America with that same mighty hand. Right? The Most High is going to redeem us from the bondage of America. Right? Come on. And redeem you out of the house of bondmen uh -huh. from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. See that? So the Most High delivered us with a mighty hand. Let my people go, right? Now, we don't understand this because we think God loves everybody. We think Christ came and died for all nations. Christ said, I'm only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what we teach you right now and you brother and sister is the good news of this Bible that Christ was going to save his people, the Israelites. Christ was an Israelite from the tribe of Jew. That's your tribe. Uh, you come from the tribe of Christ. You come from the tribe of Gad. Right? Now you got to understand, wait a minute. Now what do I got to do? Give me the, the duties of man. Right? We're going to close it out. Y'all just hanging out today? Yep. All right. I'm gonna, I know y'all got somewhere to go. But just, y'all got a card, right? Okay. Check this out. Check this out, right? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 12 and 13. The whole duty of man, right? So with this information, we're going to show you what you can do moving forward. And listen, we always looking for new brothers, right? New sisters is coming. We got wives. We got families and children to come and partake in this good news, right? But it first start with you. You know what I'm saying? We can't track you down. We don't got your information. But you got that card, right? On that card, you know where to find us, right? So let's get the whole duty of man. We're going to let y'all leave on this, right? Read what you got. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So here's how we're going to summarize everything we just said. Listen to this, bro. Fear God. We said what? Fear God. So now we got to fear God properly. Come on. And keep his commandments. So how do we fear God? Eric. Eric, Eric, okay. Eric, how do we fear God? Keep his commandments, come on. For this is the whole duty of man. So as a man, right? The whole duty for you is to teach her how to fear God, right? And we're going to go right into that, right? How do you fear God? Keep his commandments, right? Teach your wife how to fear God, keeping the commandments, right? Wearing fringes, right? That's one of the commandments of God. You see brothers right here? These are simple commandments, right? Having that beard, keep that beard going, right? Abstain from unclean foods, right? No pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. These are small commandments you can literally keep today, right? As y'all go out to eat, try to go with the beef. Try to go with the steak. Try to go with the veggies. Abstain from shrimp. Abstain from crab, lobster, pork, right? When those things keep the Sabbath days, right? Keep the Sabbath days, keep the high holy days. We can teach you that, right? We can teach you that. We got our doors are always open for new brothers that's looking the ways to get salvation. You see what I'm saying? Come. Numbers 15 and 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. Stop right here. Right? He says, Speak unto the children of Israel. You came up not knowing about this information. Moving forward, you now can identify as the children of Israel. Right? So he said, He's talking to you, both of y'all, right? He says, Speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. And Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generations. So throughout the generations is even to 2023, right? This was written thousands and thousands of years ago, but the law still stands, right? Keep these commandments and live, right? Read on. And that they put upon the fringes of the borders a ribbon of blue. That's why you see the blue around our fringes. shall be unto you for a friend that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. You see how we always harping on the commandments. That's how you show God you love him, right? By being obedient to him. Y'all got children? Okay. How old is your children? You don't mind me asking. Two year old and six year old, right? Six year old, perfect, right? When you got a six year old, you give them orders. You know, uh, put the seat down, right? If they don't do it, you get mad at them, right? So God is the same way. We're his children. So if you don't be obedient to his commandments, he mad at you, right? Same thing with us, right? Read it again. 
Remember the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that you seek not after your own heart. So don't go with your own mind. I think God like this. I think God like that. The Bible says you got to read the Bible to understand what God likes and what he doesn't like. Right? Come on. In your heart, in your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. Come on. That ye may remember and do all my commandments. No, no, some of the commandments. All my commandments. No, just love your neighbor and love God. All my commandments. You got to do all the commandments. Come on. And be holy unto your, your, your God. Come on. I am the Lord your God, which I'm brought you out of the land of Egypt. So the Most High had to acknowledge and, and re put some emphasis on and respect on his name. I am the Most High God that brought you out of Egypt, out of bondage. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we want to just bring that, uh, that, that out to you, brother. All right? All right? All right. Hey, get a brother out here, man. All right. Hey, 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 I love you for that, brother. Y'all praise all praise to the Most High. Hey, let me get you one more, one more, okay? Give me Ephesians 5 and 22, because I, I like talking to people that are married, because I think the, the scriptures tell people how to actually lead their families, right? We, we actually raise leaders of young families all through here, right? And you, just, you only see a fraction of our congregation. We got elders, we got older men, we got younger men that's not here today, right? But we actually help teach our people how to lead their wives and their children in a righteous way, right? So get... Ephesians 5 and 22. Come, bring it up. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 22. Uh -huh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And before y'all showed up, I was actually teaching on how we got to choose our spouses more strategically. You, a lot of times people are making marriages by what they see. And in 10 years, they're upset by the result. Well, you got them, you got her in a, in a not so good environment, right? You found her and she was... Dancing on the pole, acting a fool. You found him and he was throwing money and all that. The Bible said, submit yourselves. Women will submit to the men when they trust that man, right? She's not going to submit to a man that she don't have confidence in. So our women, they got to start choosing these brothers that they can literally like raise a family, have security with, that can teach them something. Men are teachers. Women are nurturers, right? So a woman is going to submit herself to a proper teacher that's going to teach her, right? Read it again. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as unto the Lord. Come on. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Y'all believe that, right? The husband is the head of the wife. Come on. Even as Christ is the head of the church. And Christ is the head of the head, the husband. Right? So it goes God, Christ, man, woman, and children. Right? Come on. And he is the savior of the body. Come on. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, this as the church is subject to Christ, listen to this. So let the wives be to their own husbands. And that wife has to be subject. This is why the wife has to choose her husband strategically, right? Come on. In everything. In what? In everything. In everything. Read. Verse 25. Listen to this. Husbands. Now husbands, this is you, brother. Love your wives. Now you gotta love your wife, right? Even as Christ also loved the church. Even Christ died for the church. So you got to be able to die for that woman, right? I tell brothers, listen, if you're going to pick a wife, you better make sure she's worth dying for. Because you got to die for that woman. And if she ain't worth it, you chose the wrong one, right? Read. Also loved it as Christ also loved the church. Read. And gave himself for it. And gave himself, come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. With the washing of water by the word. By what? By the word. So now, we're teaching our men how to clean their house up by the words of God. Right? The same way Christ did it is the same way we got to do it. So if your wife is going off, guess what? It start with the men. We can't sit up here and be like, she going off. It's her fault, her fault, her fault. And then we not teaching her properly. Right? Because she's only going to follow suit. She's When I say the weaker best, I'm not saying you, you know what I'm saying? It's more of like... The weaker vessel, you're the stronger vessel. She's still strong, but she's out of the two. She's the weaker vessel, right? So the same way that Christ, we're the weaker vessel of Christ. Christ had to teach the men. Then the men got to teach their wives. Then the wives teach the little babies. Then the little babies grow up and do the same process over and over and over, right? We don't care. Verse 27. Uh -huh. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. A what? A glorious church. So now, when you teach her properly, and your, and your wife 
pass that information down. We've seen a lot of families get killed off because the father is too busy out here teaching everybody. His whole family ain't getting this information, right? So he said, you're gonna be, you're gonna be proud of the result of what you've been establishing in your household. Read it again, that's what he's saying. Okay. That he might present it to himself. To himself, he can look back and be like, man. A glorious church. A glorious church, come on. Not having spot. Not having spot. You gotta be able to get the spot. To start with you, you the, you the cleanup man, right? When she going off, you gotta look at yourself and say, damn, what I do wrong, right? Not saying that it's always our fault, but if you, if you train your family, how to serve God, can't nothing touch her. And it can't nothing touch your children, read. Not having spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. or any such thing, uh -huh. but that it should be holy and without blemish. And without blemish, that's it on that? Uh, count when we have verse uh, 28. No, that's it, that's it, right? So that makes sense, bro? All praises, all praises. Ooh. Hey, look, hey, look, check this out. Hey, there's more to it. We love to teach you more, brother, you know what I'm saying? We meet up on Wednesdays. We actually have a school right here in um, Roberts Park. And then we out here on Friday nights. And then we um, sometimes we're here on Saturdays. But you got the information. Um, hey, if, can somebody get his number? You mind exchanging numbers? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna try to uh, reach out, you know what I'm saying, through the spirit. Hey, get that family a hand, man, that's a beautiful thing. Right? Get that map between two and nine again. And this is why we are out here. We are out here not only just to uh, teach, 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 but we also here to resurrect the valley of dry bones. We were talking about that water earlier. God, God. Putting that water on our people that thirst, right? Matthew chapter 22, verse nine. Uh -huh. go, ye, go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. Through the Spirit of God, that's what we just did. We just bid to the marriage, right? We just did the proper thing and we bid it to the marriage, right? So give me, um before we wrap it on up, right? Give me, uh I like that Ephesians 5, right? Now give me verse number one. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Ephesians 5 and 1. God. It's the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 from the top. Uh -huh. Be ye therefore followers of the Most High uh -huh. as dear children and walk in love as Hamashiach also hath loved us. And had given himself. And had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to the Most High for a sweet smelling savor. Verse three. But fornication. But what? Fornication. Fornication. We talked about earlier. Fornication. Right. That destroyed many men. That destroyed the mightiest men. Okay. Fornication destroyed kings, mm -hmm. right? A lot of kings died and had a short span because of fornication. Like that woman, like that woman to do it 10 out of 10 times, read. But fornication uh -huh. and all uncleanness or covetousness. And covetousness and uncleanness, come on. Let it not be once named among you. Look what Paul said, he said, don't let cleanness, fornication and covetousness, we just read in the Torah, he said, don't let it be named amongst these brothers, right? Come on. As becometh saints. Come on. Neither filthiness. Neither filthiness, that's this. Nor foolish talking. Now, we talked about Wendy Williams. Wasn't that foolish talking? And the Most High shut her mouth. She can't even have any more foolish talk. The Most High took that power from Wendy. And the new one is uh, Charlemagne. Charlemagne the God, he's another one that gossips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charlemagne the God of gossip. Right. Yes, right. right, DJ Envy, right. And he got, he got a whole lot coming out against him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? His wife is putting him on blast. Uh, right, y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. She putting him on blast. Right, it's bad. It's all bad. Most High is putting, he's lifting the skirts up and exposing these brothers in these last days. So you know we're in the end, right? So you got the foolish talking, right? All that gossip, tail bearing. Come on, King. Nor jesting. Nor what? Jesting. Nor jesting. Listen to this. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You see that? You can't make this up. This is not convenient to have jesting and whoremongers and talking and coveting this, right? Read on. Verse 5. Uh huh. For this ye know that no whoremonger. Now listen to this. I got a question for the once saved, always saved understanding and doctrine. Listen to what Paul says right here, right? Read. For this ye know. That no whoremonger, now, no whoremonger, come on, 
nor an unclean person. Nor an un unclean person. You eat unclean foods. Or you going into homosexuality. You going into transgenderism. Read. Nor a covetous man. Nor a covetous man. Who is an idolater. Uh -huh. Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So you damn right you can lose your spot in the kingdom of heaven. Because by the time you're 19 years old, you can do these things. But if you come and ask Christ. At nine years old to come into your heart. Right. Then by the time you're 19, you did all these things, right. you done lost your spot in the kingdom of heaven. Right? right? You done lost your whole seat. So you know we gotta endure to the end. You're not once saved, always saved. We don't huh? let no man deceive you uh -huh. with vain words. See that your pastor tells you you can do what you want. You ask Christ to come into your heart. Your mother out told you that when you was nine years old, come into my heart, Jesus. And you're going to be in the kingdom of heaven, right? Now I got a license to sin, a license to kill. It don't work like that. Let no man deceive you. Y'all, a lot of our people are deceived. You're deceived by a whole lot of vain words. And it's very easy to fall into that deception because it fits your lifestyle, right? Read on. For because of these things cometh the wrath of the Most High uh -huh. upon the children of disobedience. Read. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. He said what? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. And that's why we tell brothers to get up out these nightclubs, man. We tell brothers to get up out these nightclubs. Get out these situations where you are partaking in the sin. Right? There's, a, there's an old saying that says silence is what? Acceptance. Silence is acceptance. So if you are partaking with them and they're doing all these wicked acts and you're not saying nothing, then you're encouraging it. You're a co-conspirator, right? You're actually a part of the problem. Come on. Verse 8. Uh -huh. For ye were sometimes darkness, uh -huh. but now are ye light. Give me uh, Proverbs 4 and 19. Paul said, read that part again. For ye were sometimes darkness, uh -huh. but now are ye light in the Lord. You see that? At one time you were in darkness, and now you are in the light of Yahweh while Yahweh shine. What does that mean to be in darkness? What does it mean to actually have a, a dark cloud following you, right? Or to be in light, the differences, right? There's differences with dark and light and light and dark. We are the children of who? The light, the light. Right? right? And these other nations are the children of darkness. What does it mean to be in darkness? Uh, verse 19. Proverbs chapter four, verse 19. Uh -huh. The way of the wicked is as darkness. I know not at what they stumble. So the way of the wicked is as darkness, right? Now get chapter six, verse 23. There's a difference between the darkness and the light, right? He said the way of the wicked is as darkness, but we teach the light, read that. Proverbs chapter six, verse 23. Uh -huh. For the commandment is a light, uh -huh. and the law is light, Come on. and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So the commandment is the law of life, and that is the light we're talking about. Now let's go right back to where you at, Kay. For ye were sometimes darkness, uh -huh. but now are ye light in the Lord. So we were once wicked, now we come back and keep the laws of God. He said we act like gangsters. Walk as children of light. Hey, hey, only, only a gangster, the original gangsters, right. him and his people, Will have that 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 word and that verdict towards us, right? right Walking right. around with the dog off the chain. Right. That's a gangster mentality, right? right. All we're doing is just teaching the laws of God. That's right. But of course, we're the gangsters to the heathen. Right. You damn right. And guess what? We are the terrorists to the heathen as well. That's right. We're looking at the future terror. We're more than gangsters. We terrorists, right? right? We gonna strike terror in the head in the hearts of our enemies. That's right. We, we don't came. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Uh -huh. Walk as children of light. Come on. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and fruit. How y'all sisters doing? Y'all doing all right? All praises. Read on. Uh, Salaki, so proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Come on. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, Come on. but rather reprove them. Come on. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now think about this. Read that again. Read it slowly. Think about this, right? And think about the 180 degrees that we are under today. 
Right? Paul said this. Read it, that last part again. Ephesians 5 verse 12. Uh -huh. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Think about this. There used to be a time when a, a man would be ashamed of being adulterer. Right? It would be a time when a man used to be ashamed of coveting or being a murderer or being a backbiter or a tailbearer. Now they're giving you millions of dollars to not even be ashamed of that. Think about the 180 degrees that we used to be under. We used to be ashamed of being these wicked acts, being in dark. Now you wear it if you don't do it. What's the old, hey, what do they say now? Hey, somebody got to hit it if ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's how we used to live. Somebody got to sell these drugs. It said, read it again, brother. Uh, so lock here. In verse 13. 12, 12, 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved and made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest. He said, What? Awake thou that sleepest. So we waking our people up, brother. Sisters, right? Y'all got time? Y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. All praises, right? They believe in the Bible, right? So read it again. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, uh -huh. and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And how do you arise from the dead? That means to come when you were once dead in your sin. The wages of sin is death. You were once dead in your sin. Christ died so that you can now be resurrected. That was the beauty of Christ's resurrection. It was a physical analogy on what we can spiritually do. Right? Christ dying and then rising from the dead. That's the same way we're going to rise from the dead once we take hold of these commandments these laws and these statutes, right? Because the Bible said the law is what? The law is life. And sin is what? Death. So if you're in sin, you're dead. Christ died so that you can now learn these commandments, learn these life, and learn these statutes, and now you're able to be brought back and revived, or they say resuscitated, right? That's what we all talk about. That's what we're teaching about. We're talking about the valley of dry bones. Everybody's dead walking down and riding down Glenwood Avenue. Hopefully, we just talked to this brother five minutes ago, and he's able to come back to life, right? Most high brother, that's what we out here for, right? We don't okay. Verse 14. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Come on. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Come on. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Me? Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What's the will of the Lord? Right? Give me Psalm 40 and verse 8. What is the will of God? What does God want the Israelites to do? Right? Is it to, you know, ride this bike down Glenwood Avenue and play his music to where everybody can hear it, even though they make AirPods and they have sound? That can go into your ear. We don't want to hear all that, right? What is the will of God, right? What about you, brother? Do you know what God's will is, brother? I do not. You want to know? I'm good for right now. <laughs> for right now? Hey, tomorrow might not be promised, bro. I know it isn't. You believe in God? I believe in something. You believe in something? You see that? I believe in something. 40 and 8. Let's get the will of God. Hey, look, 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 how are you a grown man? You believe in something, but you can't describe what that something is. Yeah, I believe in something. These guys, listen, our people do not. Hey, but you know what? Ain't nothing. Hey, listen, we got to have patience with that brother, right? But he ain't got patience for us. We're not going to chase him down, right? I could have gave him this. I could have gave him the will of God right here. Read that, brother. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Uh -huh. I delight to do thy will. Come on. Oh my God. Uh -huh. Ye, thy law is within my heart. He said, Thy law is within my heart. That is the will of God. Right? The law of the most high God. Let's go right back to where we at. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, uh -huh. redeeming the time because the days are evil. Come on. Wherefore, be ye not unwise. 
but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's what Paul is saying. Understand the law. Understand the law of Moses. Understand the Torah. Right? What's going on, brothers? How y'all doing? Hey, y'all believe in God, bro? Hey, can I read you a scripture real quick? One, one, one scripture. Just one. All right. All right. Hey, look. Right, look. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. That's right. right? Hey, he, hey, what's Christ going to say? Depart from me. I never knew you. Ye that work iniquity. We tried. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be like, appreciate that. I got to go watch this kickoff. Right? <laughs> I got to go. I got to go stop this Edomite real quick. <laughs> yeah, you go chill over here. And, you know what I'm saying? All right, where we at, King? Uh, verse 18. Uh -huh. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. And what is what? Wherein is excess, uh -huh. but be filled with the spirit. Like sometimes we gotta take a fast from alcoholism, right? We gotta we gotta chill on the journey. We gotta chill. He said, read that part again, bro. And be not drunk with wine, uh -huh. wherein is excess. You see that? So you can drink a little bit, but it says excess, right? Excess drinking. You stumbling down Glenwood Avenue. You plant. You land in your own vomit, right? You 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 can't drive. Right, you can't pass a damn breathalyzer. You can't pass the test. Is that is that for our people? Should a black man be drunk on Glenwood Avenue when the Klan ride around? Right. And look, sometimes we gotta look at our own self. We gotta say to ourselves, "Hey, I've been doing too much lately. Let me chill out. Let me take a good day off. Let me take a good week off. Let me let me fast on the alcohol from Passover to Pentecost." Right. Let me do these things and watch what happens. You save your money, you lose your weight, you do all these things, it's, it's good for you, right? He said, let us not be drunk with wine in excess, right? Come on. And be not drunk with wine where it is excess, uh -huh. but be filled with spirit. Now you gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit, not spirits. Because what do they call liquor? Spirits. They call it spirits. Right. So uh -huh. Paul is saying this, hey listen, get a hold on your, on your drinking. These are, these are wise words from our brother Paul, right? Come on. Verse 19. Uh -huh. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. So Paul is saying now you want to meditate on the psalms and hymns of the Most High God. Right? When you got that alcohol uh, itch, now let's, let me open the book of psalms. Right? Or let's say, let's take alcohol out of it. Right? Let's say you got a problem with lust, fornication, whatever. Right? You can substitute, you can substitute that feeling by reading and meditating on the words of God. That's why the Bible says in Psalm the first chapter, you will be like what? A tree planted by the water, yielding her fruit, right? Meditating on the words of God. That's how you get that, that, that good fruit, by meditating on the words of God. We did a lesson on that a couple months ago, right? When you speak about the words of God, write about the words of God, read the words of God, uh, um, um, meditate and, and think about these things. These are things that how you, you stay in the spirit. When you feel low in the spirit, Start going back through the senses and start meditating on the words of God. That's how you get right back in the spirit of the Most High. It's up to you, right? Get, we're going to get the last two and we're going to close it out. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Come on. Giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High. And the Father, in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Oh, praise to the Most High, right? So with that, man, and brothers got one they want to bring out? You got, the, you got a preset? Come Hey, listen, man, with that, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor. Hopefully, this, uh, this, this video, if you at home, was edifying. Again, you can change the ways of the Black, Hispanic, and Native American community by doing things and then taking things out and preaching the words of the Most High, Most High God and His Son Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. With that, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor. We say, Call Allah, but now we Yahweh, by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And with that, we say, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.